Can we please be drama-free in Dallas this weekend? You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome into another edition of Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Matt Derry with you. Today is Friday, October 11th into Saturday, October 12th. Thanks for making us your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. That could be Spotify. That could be Apple. That could be on our Locked On Lions YouTube channel where you can subscribe and watch for free daily right here on YouTube. Got to give a shout out. To our everydayers that are out there that watch and listen to the podcast daily, I met a couple of everydayers uh, down at the Tigers-Guardians Game 3 the other day. My guys, Javante and Brian Hunter. Thank you, fellas, for checking out Locked On Lions. Dennis Schooley, the pride of Eastern Michigan, living in the state of Indiana. He's an everydayer. And uh, the Bully brothers. Antonio, who I just met, great dude, and his brother Angelo, big Lions fans. Got to give a shout out to them as well. And Connor Bruin. Connor was in my section for game three the other day. He felt bad. He kept getting up to get beers and stuff. And he's like, Matt Derry. And I said, what's your name? He said, Connor Bruin. He's a big Locked On fan. So thank you for uh, checking us out daily. All the everydayers that are out there, we appreciate you. Locked On Lions today is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Place your first uh, $5 bet and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can follow us on Twitter, at Dairy Speaks, also at Locked On Lions, and the Matt Dairy Facebook fan page as well. Coming up on the show today, we got to get into it. Lions and Cowboys. I got to start with a little bit of a rant, because what my hope is, is that after this football game, Sunday at like 7.30, quarter of 8, it starts at 4.25, we're going to get on here, I'm going to get on here, you guys can be talking to your friends or your family or wherever you're gathered on Sunday. And we're going to talk about the result of the game. We're not going to talk about the refs. Please, can we have that this Sunday? Hopefully a Lions win. I think it's going to be. But I'm tired of controversy in Dallas. I'm tired of the Lions getting screwed in Dallas. I will explain coming up momentarily on the program. Also, on the show today, we got to get you an injury update. We got to talk about some stats that uh, are pretty damning when it comes to the uh, Dallas Cowboys. And Trevor Nowoski has been the talk of the week. And you're probably going, who? I will explain. All of that coming up today, right here on Lockdown Lions. So everybody's had a great week. In case you missed Trey Wingo on Wednesday, go back and watch or listen to that. Trey was great from DraftKings, formerly of ESPN. And of course, yesterday we did the crossover show with Marcus Mosier from Lockdown Cowboys. I've angered some Cowboy fans, apparently. Uh, On Twitter, a couple of said, oh, I guess the Cowboys shouldn't even show up, according to the Detroit guy. No, I think the Lions are a better team. And if Dallas, Micah Parsons with that ankle is still walking around in a boot, he's not going to play. Demarcus Lawrence isn't playing. Marshawn Nealon's not playing. They're down to like fourth string defensive ends. Uh, To me, this is only going to be a Dallas win if the Lions can't stop C.D. Lamb. He goes too crazy and it turns into a shootout. Otherwise, I believe the Lions are going to win this football game. I think they're just better. Dallas is going into a bye. You heard Marcus yesterday from Lockdown Cowboys. If they're three and three going into the bye, it's not so bad. So that's my thoughts on this game coming up. But first things first, 2014 playoff game, Brandon Pettigrew, pass interference, Anthony Hitchens, Pete Morelli, the official, picks up the flag. Unprecedented, total screw job. Pettigrew was interfered with. There was no explanation, no reason the flag was picked up, and the Lions lost the football game. It was heartbreaking. Now, again, they couldn't stop Tony Romo at the end. Caldwell botched the fourth and one. There's all sorts of things that went on in that game. But the big play in the game was a pass interference call that for no reason at all was overturned. Go back to last year. Taylor Decker reports eligible. Catches the go-ahead two-point conversion. No guarantee the Lions were definitely going to win after that, but it was looking good. And the officials screw it up. Brad Allen and his crew completely botched it. 
because Decker reported eligible, Dan Skipper, the whole, I don't want to go. The bottom line is this, ladies and gentlemen, Locked On Lions listeners, tomorrow or Sunday, 425, your Detroit Lions are going to Dallas, and I don't want to hear about the officials. I'm tired of it. The officiating in this league needs to get better. So far this year, I haven't seen anything in Lions games that I'm totally fired up about, but I've been fired up because the Lions have played some big games down in Dallas, and I know it's a daunting place to play, and it's Jerry World, and it's the Cowboys, and it's the Star in the Helmets, and it's Dak, and back then it was Romo, and Zeke, and all these guys. All right, Cowboys always have talent. Cowboys are always going to be relevant. I was watching the first take the other day at the airport. They did 20 minutes on Dallas and Pittsburgh to start that, that show. 20 minutes. Dak and Tolbert and, and the fumble by Dowdle, all these things, and the Cowboys and not having Micah Park, all this stuff. The Detroit Lions are going to get major, major play this weekend. And if you care about that stuff and you and you and you yearn for national people to talk about your team, it's happening, folks, on Monday. You're going to turn on Sports Center, First Take, FS1, whatever those shows are called, Craig Carton, whatever they all are. You're going to get in your car, put on Sirius XM, and it could be ESPN Radio, it could be NFL Radio, it could be Mad Dog Sports Radio. Dallas always gets talked about. Always. This is a prime game. 425, Kevin Burkhart, Tom Brady, woo on Fox. Lions are going to get some love. They're going to be talked about, win the football game, and no BS from the officials. I don't want to talk Sunday on the postgame uh, podcast here, and neither does Jake Reitma on the postcast. I don't want to talk about the officials. Go in and keep it out of their hands. And if it happens again, I don't even know what to say. But Brad Allen won't be the official. Pete Morelli is retired. John Hussey is the referee this week. They had a bye last week, Hussey and his crew, just like the Lions did. So they their minds should be fresh. They should be relaxed. But I do not want to say the name John Hussey on Sunday's show or Monday show, or Tuesday show of next week. Tired of it. And you Lion fans should be sick of it too. When the Lions play in Dallas, eerie, weird, wacky, zany, BS occurs. No more. I want the Lions to step on their necks. And I want the league to make sure that this crew doesn't D around in this game. Are, 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 is the back judge going to make a mistake on a pass interference call? Sure. Is the official going to see a holding, a miss a holding call or two? Of course. Guy grabs a face mask a little bit. Maybe they miss it in the scrum. I get it. But I don't want giant controversy. I don't want report gate. I don't want picked up flag gate. I don't want Pettigrew talk. I don't want Taylor Decker talk. You know Fox is going to show it. They're going to show last year's two-pointer. Tackle eligible play, go off to Decker. Woo wee. I don't want to see it. They'll show it, but then let's move on. The Lions are the better football team. They're more physical. I got some stats. Let me give you some stats uh, to go over that are going to help the Lions cause. They should run the ball and throw the ball all day on this team. When you're taking Lawrence and Parsons off the field, those guys are studs. All right, I got that off my chest. Coming up next, um, what did I say on the thing? Yeah, let me give you two numbers for the Cowboys and where they rank in pretty big stats that I think is a major advantage for the Honolulu Blue and Silver Gladiators that are the Detroit Lions. We will uh, do all of that coming up next right here on a Friday edition of Locked On Lions. And Locked on Lions is brought to you by Robin Hood Gold. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the 1%. Robin Hood Gold allows others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for the high society. 
Now, the resourceful individual, the Robinhood Gold, can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash, receive unlimited 1% deposit bonuses, and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply for product-specific disclosures. Visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. And of course, we're brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. We got to love FanDuel, folks. NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return right here. On FanDuel, it is America's number one sports book. Of course, you're going to get a hunch in the middle of the game on Sunday. You want to check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more you can on the same page where you place your bets at FanDuel.com. Tomorrow, here we go. Guardians, Tigers, Game 5, winner take all. You want to do some some bets on Tarek Skubal. You want to bet on the game, money line, over, under, whatever it is. Team totals, you could do so at FanDuel. Big college football slate and, of course, the entire NFL slate as well. You'll get started at FanDuel with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. FanDuel.com, America's number one sportsbook. Matt Derry back with you. It is a Friday edition of Lockdown Lions right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network sporting my Bradley Braves golf shirt today. My uh, daughter is at Bradley and uh, go Braves. Pick to win the Missouri Valley Conference in basketball. Um, all right. Two numbers that stand out. So the Lions are three and one off a of bye. The Cowboys are three and two. They've won two in a row, including Sunday night's win over the pathetic offensively uh, and, or, or maybe we should say the offensive offense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dallas, there are two numbers that stand out when you look at team defense, or one for team offense, one for team defense for the Dallas Cowboys. When was the last time the Dallas Cowboys running game was this bad? For years, they had Zeke, Tony Pollard. Now they got Rico Dowdle and Zeke, part three. The Dallas Cowboys are 31st in the NFL in rushing. They run the ball at a clip of 82 yards per game. Lions are top 10 in the league. I think they're sixth, like 151 a game. You can't run the football in this league, and you're exclusively having to throw. You're not going to win a lot of games. Yes, Dallas has a winning record right now, but my gosh, there are 32 teams in this league. The Cowboys are 31st. Dallas for years. And I know Zach Martin is still there, but they've had great offensive lines. Great offensive lines. And when you talk about the Lions, what do what, what concerns you about their defense week in and week out? Sometimes it's just young cornerbacks. And, and you know, they're, they're, the Lions aren't blessed with pro bowlers out there. Carlton Davis is an upgrade. He's had a good start to the year. Terry on Arnold has had his struggles, whatever. But if the Lions know coming in that Dallas cannot run the football, it's going to be a major advantage for Aaron Glenn in this defense. It really is. Plus, the Lions are good against the run anyway, no matter if they're facing the top-run offense in the league or the 31st best. So that's a number that stands out to me, that Dallas is second worst in the entire league in running the football. Lions at the start of the year had trouble with what offensively? Anybody? Raise your hand. Couldn't score in the red zone. Why are the Lions settling for field goals? Oh my gosh, red zone efficiency, which got better in the Monday night win over Seattle. Dallas Cowboys are second worst, 31st in the league in red zone defense. Teams are scoring touchdowns at a 78% clip. They They can't run the ball and they can't stop you in the red zone. Jared Goff and this offense, Jared Goff, Jared Goff and this offense. It's funny. I went to the game three of Guardians Tigers and I told my brother who came in from Cleveland, wait for the Jared Goff chant. It's coming. He's like, at a Tigers game? I go, yeah. And it, again, it was there. Not that loud, but it was there. Um, Jared Goff and this offense should 
I should be getting into the end zone, man. That's 31st in the league in red zone defense, and now they're without Micah Parsons again. So I love the Lions' chances. Those are two numbers that stand out to me that should be major advantages for Detroit and something that they should hop on here. For this game, I, I think that they get the Lions probably at like 28 17 this week, winning 31 20, something like that. I think the Lions win and cover this game. I really do. Um, so, those are some two numbers that usually Dallas is very good and they're not right now. Um, Saginaw Valley State's own, Canton, Michigan's own, Trevor Nowoski is going to be getting some more playing time this week. Now that Derek Barnes is likely done for the year, as they like to call it in the the, the NFL trades, the Sam linebacker spot, the strong side linebacker spot. Um, You know, you got the Mike linebacker, you got the weak side backer, you got the Sam. Um, The strong side linebacker spot has been anybody's guess the last few weeks since Derek Barnes has been out. You can rush from that spot. You can drop back. There's versatility there. The Lions wanted James Houston to play that that role along with Barnes at the start of the year and in training camp, and he couldn't do it. Trevor Nawaski, whom the Arizona Cardinals let go and the Lions reacquired. Remember, the Lions had Nawaski at a Sa- Saginaw Valley State last year. Bit of a roster crunch. Had to let him go. Arizona picked him up. Well, Cardinals got rid of him at the start of the year and the Lions picked him back up. According to Dan Campbell and Aaron Glenn, the former SVSU linebacker, who played about 11 snaps in Monday's game over Seattle two weeks ago, is going to be playing more. And they would like to find a role for him alongside Alex Anzalone, Jack Campbell, and of course, Malcolm Rodriguez. Aaron Glenn has shown over the last few years, he really likes to rotate all of his linebackers. And for years, and you guys remember this, I've been doing this pod since 16. I have ripped up and down the Lions linebackers for years. Outside of DeAndre Levy for a little while, Stephen Tulloch, and now Anzalone to an extent. The Lions have not had great linebackers over the years. Who was the last Lions linebacker to go to the Pro Bowl? Um, Chris Spielman, maybe? Does it go back that far? Did Levy ever make a Pro Bowl? We're going to have Stephen Tulloch, by the way, on the show. I've been talking to him. We're going to get him back on. Um, but Nawaski has played really well. He's performed in practice and they feel like he's athletic enough that this is a guy that can cover tight ends, uh, uh, help stop the run on the edges and can be a, a really solid piece. You lose a guy like Derek Barnes, who's multi, you know, multifaceted, versatile, can rush the passer, can play against the pass, can play against the run. I like the way Derek Barnes was playing, but unfortunately a cheap shot cut block is likely ending his season from week three against Arizona. So keep an eye on Trevor Nowoski this week to be getting more snaps, play a little bit more. And it's a cool story. He's from here, local kid. And this isn't just some, we're giving the local guy a shot. Uh, Dan Campbell really likes him and feels like he can help the team. So I think that's, I think that's cool. So we'll see how this goes this week against Ferguson, a pretty good tight end for Dallas and some of the guys that the Cowboys present. We know this too. Dak Prescott, for some odd reason, does better against pressure. So not sure what Aaron Glenn's going to be dialing up, but keep an eye on Nawaski. He's going to get an opportunity to play and we'll see. You know, he played 11 snaps against Seattle and I think he'll play more uh, this coming weekend. Again, it depends on how much Dallas's offense is on the field. And, uh, and everything else. But I'm so excited for this game Sunday. And I'm sure the Nawaski family in Canton is pumped as well that their son is going to be getting some more uh, more time because he's impressed Aaron Glenn. And as we know, Aaron Glenn is not afraid to play a lot of guys. They rotate a lot of people in. Ify Malafanu last year was having great practices to the point they elevated him and he started playing and he started playing a lot. It helped the uh, Gardner Johnson was hurt, but regardless, we saw how that went. Um, injury update, which we want to get to you uh, coming up next on a Friday edition of Locked On Lions. Lions and Cowboys coming up this weekend. Cannot wait. Um, 
always an adventure, like I said, when the Lions play uh, in Dallas. But regardless, um, it's time for them to just go in there and win and be done. Go win, get on the plane, come home. I don't want any controversy. I don't want any of that stuff. Um, I'm a Dak fan. I think Dak's all right. I, I know he's one of the more polarizing players in the league, but I think he could throw it around a little bit. All right, let's get a little prize picks read in, then we'll talk injuries next. And we told you about prize picks, the best place for daily fantasy sports out there. It is a lot of fun. With over 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, prize picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. All you got to do is just pick more than or less than on at least two players in their stats for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash with prize picks. You run your game all season long on prize picks. It's that simple. What's fun about prize picks is you pick players and you make those uh, stat projections. Um, you know, what do you think about this weekend? And let's say a guy like Amari Cooper, Browns at Eagles, will he have more than or less than about 70 receiving yards? You can bet on that at prize picks. Uh, Lions game, Jameer Gibbs. I think he's going to have a huge game. More than or less than 75 and a half rushing yards for Jameer Gibbs. Throw some money on that at prize picks. It is a lot of fun. Download the app today. Use the code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. All right. Again, download the app, prize picks. Use the code Lockdown NFL to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Prize picks, run your game. I mentioned it before with all of the uh, injuries that Dallas has on defense right now, especially on the edge. I think that means Jameer Gibbs is going to have a big game. I really do. I think Gibbs on some wide handoffs, some pitch plays, I think can really, really bust through. And, and if I'm looking at a guy Sunday that we're going to give a game ball to Sunday evening when we do the pod, um, I think Jameer Gibbs on that fast track down in Dallas, that turf, this could be a coming out party for a number 26. So keep your eye on Jameer Gibbs. They're going to run the football anyway with Montgomery and Gibbs, and you know try to have good balance. But I love the fact um, that with all these guys out uh, for the Cowboys defensively, you know, the Jordan Lewis versus Amon Ross St. Brown. There's trash talk going on. That'll be a fun matchup to watch. But I think Gibbs is going to have a big, big game in this game. Um, injury situation for the Lions. There was some talk yesterday about Kirby Joseph, who uh, left practice with a hamstring, came back today, is fine. He's not even listed on the injury report. So Kirby Joseph is, as Dan Campbell said today, good to go. For Sunday's game in Dallas, Brian Branch coming back from being sick is fine. Also, not on not no injury designation for him. And Frank Rag now coming back from that torn pec uh, will be just fine and will start Sunday for the Lions against the Cowboys. Now I have to laugh at myself and make fun of myself, but a lot of you made fun of me the other day because I talked about the pec and the oblique, but I was talking about the oblique when I was talking about the pec, and I was talking about how. Man, if you're down here in your rag now, that's hard. That's your oblique. I screwed up. Torn pec muscle is up here. All right? Still very difficult. I was kind of saying stomach and oblique. So I messed up between oblique and pec. But look, Graham Glasgow played well the other day. Uh, Coyote Awoshika did well. And the Lions have some depth along the offensive line. But anytime you go into a game, and you have your Pro Bowl center in Frank Ragnow. It just, it makes a big difference. And it's a huge difference this week for one big reason. Who's Dallas's defensive coordinator now that Dan Quinn has left to be the head coach of the uh, Commanders? Mike Zimmer, former Vikings head coach, has been a D coordinator a long time, is now the Cowboys defensive coordinator. Mike Zimmer knows the Lions, coaching against them for years in Minnesota. Mike Zimmer likes to mix it up. He likes to line up three guys on one side on the D line and one on the other and line up linebackers and all sorts of weird things at the line of scrimmage. Well, that's where Frank Ragnow can point out, Hey, let's slide this protection this way. Hey, let's put a body on 72 or 93. That's how valuable Ragnow is to this football team. 
So having him back against a Mike Zimmer led defense, I think is huge. So Lions are healthy going into this game. The only player on the injury report is uh, Christian Mahogany, who remains out and still on the non football injury list. Uh, other than that, everybody is back coming off a bye. So this should be um, a huge, huge game for the Lions and a game that they should win. Meantime, Cowboys are without Micah Parsons, has been ruled out with an ankle, and Eric Kendricks, former Viking stalwart at linebacker, he's got a calf shoulder injury. He's out for Dallas as well. Uh, Deron Bland, their fine cornerback, foot injury is questionable. Nick Vigil, the linebacker, foot injury questionable. Kalen Cl uh, uh, Carson, one of their backup cornerbacks, shoulder injury also questionable. So Bland might play. But you are taken out of there, number 11, arguably the best pass rusher in the game in Micah Parsons. The guy's a monster. So no Micah Parsons is a major, major break for the Lions. So again, I have him winning like 28-17, 31-20. We'll throw something out on social media over the weekend with my prediction. All right, thanks for making us your first listen, everybody. Checking us out wherever you get your podcasts. Here on another week of Locked On Lions, we are back again Sunday after the game. Have a great weekend, everybody, and go Lions.